Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today we have leaked pricing for Nvidia's upcoming super GPUs. 10 nanometers is looking better and better. Intel is working with Samsung, but not why you think. Can PCI Express 6.0? But first, while 10 nanometers is finally coming, Intel still insists on their 14 nanometer process for desktops. So make sure to get your future proof 14 nanometer plus 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 infinity mug at store.gamermeld.com or visit the link in the description below. Okay. It's news time and first up for today I've got some potential pricing on Nvidia's upcoming super GPUs. Now, while this isn't exclusive from WCCF Tech, keep in mind that their recent super leaks have perfectly gone along with other outlets, so while they aren't revealing their source, it seems to be credible to an extent. Just make sure that you know this isn't absolutely guaranteed. With that out of the way, I'm going to go through each of the upcoming cards. First is the 2080 Super, which is apparently built on a TU-104-450 die, but WCCF Tech claims that it's actually a TU-102 die, which is what makes up the 2080 Ti that's just been repurposed for less RAM. As for price, the 2080 Super is to come in at $799, which for those who don't remember is the MSRP that the 2080 launched with, and if this is the Founders Edition, we can likely expect much lower prices from AIBs. Next is the 2070 Super, which is made from a TU-104-410 die, which is the non-OC 2080 chip, and as WCCF Tech revealed before, it's unlocked, so we can expect some wild performance from partners, though with a higher TDP. As for its price, we're yet again looking at the old MSRP of the non-Super version at $599. Lastly is the 2060 Super, which comes with a TU-106-410 die, or a non-OC unlocked 2070. As for its price, things get weird because it doesn't follow the trend as the other two, instead opting for a more expensive MSRP of $429. Now, if this is true, it's likely a way to ensure they aren't forced to lower the GTX 1600 series pricing, especially since AMD isn't releasing anything in that bracket. And of course, while that sucks, more performance from the other two cards at the same price is still a win. Let's just hope Nvidia's partners are able to get the prices even lower with third-party cards. Next up for today, Notebook Check found and shared a benchmark for Intel's upcoming 10 nanometer i7 notebook chip, and it's really impressive. The benchmark was found on Passmark, but it was removed, which as always doesn't really tell us anything other than the likely scenario that Intel asked the company to remove it. Either way, we have a cached version, and the 15 watt low power chip was actually able to keep pace and single core score with the i9-8950HK. Now, obviously the i9 would win in multi-core benchmarks, but that's because it simply has more cores. But the Ice Lake i7 has a base clock of 1.3 GHz and a turbo of 3.9, while the i9 has a base clock of 2.9 GHz and a turbo of 4.8. Yeah, that's pretty huge. I mean, it even beats the Ryzen 7 3750H, and remember that we're talking about Intel's low power chip. Of course, we're gonna need more third-party benchmarks to say anything for sure, but things are definitely looking good for the company, at least when it comes to mobile chips, because there's still no sign of seeing desktop processors going 10 nanometers anytime soon. Speaking of issues with Intel's production, recent rumors suggested that the company was in talks with Samsung to produce future Rocket Lake chips, which would definitely show just how behind the company is. But according to Tom's hardware, that apparently isn't true, sort of. From a quote, source close to the matter, Intel is apparently discussing production with Samsung, but it's for much smaller products like chipsets. So basically, they're still clearly having capacity issues, but not to the point where they can't produce their own chips. Lastly for today, PCI SIG, the group responsible for the PCI Express standard, just announced early spec details for PCI Express 6.0. I know, I know, consumers still don't have PCI Express 4.0 yet, but here we are. The thirst for more and more bandwidth is never satisfied. This time, the new PCI Express 6.0 is planned to be completed by 2021, and it's unreal as they've doubled the bandwidth yet again. See, with PCI Express 4.0, you get 16 giga transfers per second, but PCI Express 5.0 brings 32, and now 6.0 doubles that again to bring us a whopping 64 giga transfers per second. As with PCI Express 4.0, you're really only going to use this for storage unless either Nvidia or AMD can figure out how to combine GPUs to have them treated as one card. If that happens, graphics performance will likely jump into the stratosphere. Please, just please do it. 
So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Excited for RTX Super GPUs or are you ready for future storage that's basically the speed of RAM? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely make sure to subscribe. And as always, have a great day.